That particular bald eagle was uh, found by a, a rancher about uh, four or five miles west of Cedar City, Utah. The eagle uh, was on the ground. The rancher was a little concerned because the eagle seemed like it was tame and it would just sit there. And the eagle sat there for a couple of days and then the rancher decided to give me a call that the eagle just wasn't moving and wanted, wondering if the eagle might be sick. When I first saw the eagle, it was uh, sitting under a group of cottonwood trees. Well, you're standing. That's a good sign. Uh, no apparent injury. It was uh, quite a ways away from power lines, and it was quite a ways away from uh, roads. Uh, so not really understanding what, what could have caused the eagle to just be sitting there. I carefully approached the eagle, and the eagle refused to move. Hi. How are you? Well, you're sure a pretty thing. And, and I scooped the eagle up and gave it a quick check over and it was incredibly skinny. Which is a, a bad sign it hasn't been eating for, for a very long time. Probably hadn't had a meal in two, almost three weeks. So obviously it, it went from uh, a mild concern to uh, a really critical condition. We determined that, that lead poisoning was the issue because we could find no physical injuries. The eagle had severe neurological issues. You know, you treat the symptoms, you, you want to make sure that the eagle gets lots of food, lots of fluids. Uh, subcutaneous IVs are, are in order of fluids, uh, feeding tubes, uh, medications. Uh, as, far as, as far as being able to identify the issues, uh, that really comes with experience. You know, I've been caring for these animals for uh, for the past 48 years, and I've got a pretty good handle on on a variety of illnesses, diseases, injuries that occur. I really hate when they're too sick to bite. All of the animals that that come to our rescues are at least almost all of them are in absolutely critical condition, and and it's a really bad thing when the animal just sits very quietly in the transport kennel and won't move and won't fight back and and those kinds of things so i have to uh you know reach in and grab him if he just lays there or sits there and acts tame we we know that eagle is is in really poor shape and so immediately we bring him out of the kennel we as quickly as possible get food and fluids into him give him a, a thorough health examination and and then start to uh, plan the the treatment that the eagle will receive in, in the hopes of saving its life and so that's that's kind of the point anytime that you see an animal that uh, a wild animal that, that appears to be tame it is deathly ill uh, they don't they do not want to socialize with us they don't want to be a part of us they just want to be back in the wild and left alone this particular eagle was in uh, absolute critical condition. It had lost more than more than half its body weight. It uh, probably was not going to survive, uh, no matter what we did to, to help this poor animal. And I'm a little bit sensitive to not wanting uh, to videotape what I what I call dead eagles. And so my wife Susan uh, says, let's, let's go videotape this. And I says, no, no, the, it, it probably wasn't going to be uh, worth the time to videotape it. This, this eagle uh, has a very, very slim chance of survival. And so with um, extreme intensive care uh, for 11 days, uh, where the eagle couldn't stand, couldn't move, uh, like I said, feeding tubes and uh, and everything we could do just to try to keep the poor little thing alive. Uh, after 11 days, Susan approached me again and says, what about taking some videos? And, and very, very reluctantly, I said, okay. And so the, from the, the video of me acquiring the eagle and getting it out of its airport kennel 
to the very first video you see of me feeding the eagle. Uh, there was an 11 day period in there where I, I truly didn't believe the eagle would survive. Hey little guy. We're gonna start off with some fluids. By the 11th day the bird was standing which was a good sign and it was uh, the very first time that it was able to to stand uh, on, a, on a very, very low perch. That was exciting that he was able to step up onto a perch. Sweetie, my little guy. How are we doing this morning? Oh, good. You want a bite? That's a good thing. Please understand, I have had uh, animals make it um, even further that, than that in the recovery and, and still not survive. So, there was a little glimmer of hope, but we couldn't allow ourselves to hope too much uh, because the disappointment if we lost that eagle uh, would have been severe. Oh boy. Okay. There's your fluids and your medicine. Now, Do you want to try to do this standing on your own, or shall I hold you? Let's see if we can do this with you just standing on your own, sweetheart, huh? Initially, there was three or four feedings a day, uh, and in the process of the feeding, I would uh, check the, the bird's weight and not use a scale, but I would take my, my fingers and feel its keel bone, its breastbone, and, and as the eagle Regain, regain strength uh, and and weight. That that breastbone, uh, the the muscle around the breastbone starts to cover more and more of the bone, so the bone doesn't stick out as far. Each feeding, and again three four feedings a day, each feeding w would last uh, about ten to fifteen minutes. And, and again, this is this is not an animal that I want to socialize with. It's not an animal that's a pet. This is, this is an animal that we want it to be wild, and so the, the less human contact, the better. It would take uh, about uh, 20 minutes to a half hour to prepare the, the food and fluids and medications for it. The, the food that we would start off using, uh, because it would have a difficult time digesting, it, we, would use, uh, no, we wouldn't use whole animal carcasses. But what we, we would use is either uh, jackrabbit meat, cottontail meat, uh, pigeon breast, quail breast, uh, again, natural foods. And as the eagle continued to get stronger and stronger, then we could start giving what we call casting material. And that would consist of, of whole mice uh, for, for the eagle so that it not only would get a more complete diet, but it would then then be able to to regurgitate the pellets to help clean out its digestive system, and then once the eagle is able to feed itself, then it would get whole carcasses of jackrabbits, quail, pigeons, rats, mice, and and the eagle would be allowed to to free feed or feed itself. Our uh, bald eagle this morning actually turned around on his perch. Uh, that might not sound like a, a big achievement to most of you, um, but in his uh, weakened condition and he, uh, him being able to turn around on a perch, remember uh, all of you that were in gymnastics and you practice on the balance beam and how difficult it was to turn on the balance beam? Well, these guys live on a balance beam their whole life. And for him to have the strength and coordination to turn himself around on a perch in, in his condition was, it was a huge achievement. And so we're, we're very, very excited about that. This guy right here was, was incredibly ill. Uh, all indications were lead poisoning. Um, he's got some neurological issues. Um, he may have some vision issues. And we have saved his life. Uh, we, are, you know, we are able to feed him, he's able to perch, and uh, whether or not he will be able to become physically fit enough to be able to return to the wild, we won't know that for months. Uh, but that's the goal, is get this guy back to the wild. Now here's the sad part, by federal law, 
If we cannot return this eagle back to the wild, the eagle can be placed in an educational program or the eagle must be euthanized. And that's that just tears me apart. I've been caring for these guys for 47 years and it just, just terrifies me, the thought of working with this eagle for six months and uh, he, he not being able to be releasable and that I will have to euthanize him. And I promise all of you that'll be an extremely bad day for me. Um, that is why it's so very, very important that we get the Cedar Canyon Nature Park up and running. The Cedar Canyon Nature Park will be a place where non-releasable wildlife uh, can be e placed in natural habitats and be used for wildlife education. Well, the first thing I'm going to do this morning is I want to check and see how much weight he's gained. And instead of using a scale, I will feel his heel bone, his breastbone. And this, you know, again, don't do this. Um, this can be very dangerous. Um, you know, his, uh, they, they do bite. Yes, you do, huh, sweetie? Oh, that's a good boy. That's my baby. Shh. Okay. Now, see, I've distracted him here. Let me get my hands up under here and feel his breast. There's my baby. Oh, such a good. Oh, you're doing better. He's he's got more weight on his breastbone right here, which means that he is putting on weight. So that's very 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 good. Now that beak right there is designed to rip large chunks of flesh, and so he could certainly rip a big chunk of flesh out of my hand. But I am keeping him very calm here, and he's doing okay. The next thing that you have to worry about is his feet. These feet right here. 600 pounds per square inch of crushing power of those feet. That's what he kills with. And he could drive those talons through my hand and crush the bones of my hand. So when you're dealing with wild animals, don't approach them. <clears throat> if you think they're sick, please um, call police dispatch. Do not call 911. 911 is for human emergencies. Call police dispatch. They will dispatch a wildlife rehabilitator like myself or a uh, conservation officer who is skilled in handling these animals and let them deal with it because if you try to handle an animal like this uh, you may have to call 911 because it very well could turn into a human emergency trying to get you to the hospital with an eagle hanging off your arm so please do not uh, approach or pick up um, sick or injured wildlife well it's time for his breakfast and uh, we're very pleased with, with how, how he's eating uh, I got a bag full of mice here. Now these these are domestically raised mice that we uh, order in by the thousand to feed these guys. Please understand these are like two bucks a piece. So so keep feeding these guys is extremely expensive. And I use a pair of forceps to keep my fingers a little bit further away. So he eats the mouse instead of my hand. There we go. That's my boy. That's my boy. There we go. Yes, now you know it's breakfast time, huh? Yes, you do. There's my kid. It's very important to feed them whole animals, not, not just meat. Uh, basically, um, they need the fur, they need the feather, they need the bones, they need everything uh, in order to uh, help with their digestive system. And so this guy will put down a a pretty good sized meal this morning and that's really really good like I said he's gaining weight um, he's got sufficient balance that he was able to turn around on his perch there's my baby but he's still very very much a long ways out of the, out of the from out of the woods he, he has got a lot a lot of healing to do steel still before before he can be returned to the wild. Okay, you've about got a crop full there, kiddo. You've had enough? Okay. That's a pretty good meal. That's almost the whole bag. Okay, one more time. Let me check you out here. Yes, I know. Let me check you out. Let me 
see. There you go. It's okay, baby boy. There we are. Shh. Okay, that's a pretty good sized meal that you've got in your crop right now. So you're doing all right. We'll give you your dinner, a dinner feeding. Yes, we will give you dinner feeding a little later. Okay. You ready for some breakfast, big guy? Are you? Are you ready for your breakfast? We had steady progress with, with the eagle. He's now jumping up on a perch that is about two and a half feet off the ground, uh, able to, to turn around, able to perch well. Um, his balance is, is coming back. He's still very, very weak. Uh, we are feeding him uh, whole animals, but it, he still can't, doesn't have the physical strength to stand on a carcass and tear it apart to be able to feed himself. So we're still hand feeding him. You do it, sweetheart. Yeah. That's my boy. He got a lot more meat on you. You were so skinny when we got you. You're feeling so much better. Yes, you are. It's okay. You start with three or four feedings a day, and as the eagle starts to, to gain strength and, it, and abilities to, to swallow, and, and to feed itself, then it goes to one down to a, a single feeding a day where you, you put a large portion of food in and, and allow the eagle to feed itself. Let's see. Oh, oh boy. What a good boy. What a good boy. Hmm. What a good boy. Yes, you're all right. Okay. You all right? Okay. What is a casting? Hmm? Tell us what a casting is. A casting is what is undigested. You can see right here, what we're feeding is whole mice. And uh, he'll, sw he'll eat the whole thing, and then whatever he doesn't digest, uh, the fur and bones and that kind of stuff. It's okay, sweetie. The furs and bones and that kind of stuff, he'll regurgitate into a pellet that comes out. People are more familiar with owl pellets. But all birds of prey cast pellets. Yeah, stay right there, sweetie. Let me a little bit here. Here is a pellet right here. And and this is basically uh, fur and bone and uh, whatever is else is not digestible. And they regurgitate that uh, uh, about uh, 24 hours after they've eaten. And I gave him an evening meal last night. And so he may not have brought it back up yet so he doesn't want to eat and put food on top of his casting so he can cast a little easier. You're okay. That's my boy. Yes, you are. You're such a good boy. There you go. And, uh... Yeah, sweetie. There you go. And, uh, when I bring my hand in here, what I'm doing is I'm feeling for his keel bone, and uh, basically I don't want to just pick him up and put him on a scale every day, and so I can check and see how, how, if he's gaining weight by feeling the keel bone right here, and he's really put on a tremendous amount of weight since I first got him in. So that's what I'm doing there, is just checking his weight. It's okay. I know. I know. That's my boy. Take this, sweetie. Once you start to eat, then you go. You just have to get him to start. You want that? You want that? Do you want that, sweetie? There you go. But as I, I've told everybody before, he's not out of the woods yet. He's still very weak. Yes, I know. We'll feed you a little later after you've had your casting. After your castings come up, we'll give you some breakfast. Because you haven't had your casting yet today. There's my boy. Okay. You're all right. Yes, you are. You're all right. 
That's my boy. The basic rule is that these are wild animals, these are not pets, and the, the less human interaction, the better. And so we try to, we try to minimize all human contact as much as possible. Okay. When you're dealing with wildlife, once they start feeling better and healthier, they do not want to be in captivity. And that's kind of a point where things kind of get a little bit dangerous because you're, you walk in there uh, and you need to continue the, the physical examination of the bird, but they, they don't want to be touched. As you saw in the earlier videos, the eagle just sat there and I could, I could touch his head and touch his, his chest and make sure that he's putting on weight. Uh, once they get to the point where you walk in the chamber and they fly across the chamber, they do not want to be touched, they do not want you to to grab them, to hold them, then it becomes uh, a point where you you take a pole net. You still have to do the examinations, but you take a pole net and you walk into the chamber and you net the bird, grab the bird's feet, uh, watch out for the beak because he will he will certainly at this point in time bite you viciously. The bird has regained its wild sense of independence and it doesn't like the idea of having to socialize with a human. And so it's a really, really good sign when that eagle flies back and forth across the chamber and I have to go and net the, the eagle to give it its physical examinations and make, sh make sure that the eagle is getting close to ready for release. Is that going? Okay. Okay, here's, here's what's gonna happen now. I've gotta go in, I've gotta catch him. Now, this is a completely wild eagle. We've had him for a couple of months. We want to get him back in the wild. And I'll be really honest with you, we don't want him to like me. We want him to be afraid of humans so that when he leaves, he'll fly as far away and stay away from people for the rest of his life. That's a good thing. Now, the net allows me to get him as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So I'm going to step in. I'm going to grab him with the net and get a hold of him, and then we'll, trans we'll walk him over to the car. There's my boy. Step on in. There's my boy. There's my boy. Gotcha. Good. Good. Oh, we love that. Like I said, he's not pain. He's fighting like mad. That's really good. We like that. He's ready to go back to the wild where he belongs. Well, let's get a hold of his feet here. There we go. Oh, there's my boy. For those of you that have seen the previous videos of this eagle, you can recognize that he is 100% feisty and fighting and wanting to, he wants to go back to the wild so bad right now. So that is wonderful. He is ready. If he wasn't fighting with me, I'd be worried. But since he wants to fight, that's terrific. We are going to get this guy released. And that's the goal, is to get him back in the wild as quickly as we can, as efficiently as we can. I get the left of the net here. It's a little bit of a hassle, but we're almost there. One more talent to let loose. There we are. There's my boy. Oh, I know. You can bite me. That's all right. There's a common belief among many native peoples that if you say your prayers with an eagle feather, the eagle feather will carry your prayers to God. And so when I have an eagle that's ready to be returned back to the wild, we will frequently seek out individuals or organizations that could use some extra prayers and give them the opportunity to release the eagle. Herein lies the problem. By the time I can say, okay, the eagle is healthy enough and it's ready to be returned back to the wild, the eagle is fighting with me. The eagle does not want to be in captivity. The eagle could injure himself in captivity. A and so when I, ha you know, call an organization or individual and says, we, we need to do an eagle release, the vast majority of times they say, well, okay, can we do it next month? Can we do it in three or four weeks? And the answer is no. The moment that eagle is ready to be returned to the wild, he has to be returned to the wild. Hey. Now this is a hood. 
and this is his stress protection. These guys, their eyesight is so good, a lot of movement, especially transporting the car, uh, will frighten them. They can injure themselves. And so we can put the hood over his head and block his vision so he'll sit much quieter in the car. He'll be a lot calmer. So this is his stress protection. This is the first time a hood has gone on his head. So he's never worn one before. And we'll get this. There we go. This particular Eagle release basically just uh, said anybody that wants to go up to Brian Head, which is the ski resort uh, northeast of Cedar City, and stand at the top of the mountain and release the Eagle. We're going to release the Eagle back to the wild. And we uh, offered everybody, adults, not children, but we offered any adult that was there, if they would like to be the person to actually release the Eagle, uh, we would put their name in a in a fishbowl and and draw a name and that's the person that releases the eagle. The reason that we make any wildlife relief release public, especially eagle releases, uh, is to educate the public. Uh, when I first moved to southern Utah a, as a volunteer wildlife rehabilitator, uh, we were receiving about a dozen shot eagles every year. And it wasn't that the people of southern Utah hated eagles, they just saw no value in them. And so they would drive out through the agricultural areas and say, well, there's a big bird, let's shoot it. Um, 38 years of school programs, 38 years of scout programs, 38 years of community events, 38 years of wildlife releases for the public's education. We receive a shot bird of prey about one every other year, maybe even less. And so it's the education, you know, that eagle release will save more eagles um, then I will save in a year because the general public gets to see how beautiful they are, how majestic they are, up close and personal, and see their value. And once the eagle's in the sky, I guarantee everyone that attended that eagle release, uh, when they go back out to eagle habitat, will be very careful not to injure eagles. The purpose for the release uh, first is to uh, return uh, the animal back to the wild. That's the primary focus. The second is education. The third is always to help bring awareness to our volunteer wildlife rescue organization. And so people get the opportunity to, to see and to understand um, the work that we do. You know, it, like I said, a, taking the, the animals out and just turning them loose with, with, um, without the public is certainly easier for, for us, especially me. Um, but um, we could release injured wildlife all day long, and if nobody knows that we've released them uh, and that we cared for them, then we would have a very hard time raising money for our wildlife rescue center. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service will not allow us to ban uh, rehabilitation animals. Now, we, now we can ban, we can get a, a banding permit, and we can ban baby eagles in the nest or we can ban um, eagles on their migration, trap them and, and, t and take measurements and ban them for scientific study, but they, they do not allow us to ban wildlife rehabilitation animals. North of town here we have uh, uh, a roosting site where we have you know, as many as 50 bald eagles come in and, and roost in, in the evenings. Uh, are any of those the eagles that I rescued? Maybe, but I, I have no way of knowing. I would like to say that that this particular eagle stands out um, because of because of, of its success and its willingness to fight for its life, and and re we were able to return to the wild. But that's a story that has has occurred in my life hundreds of times. We need a lot of help. Probably the first and foremost that we need is people who have the skills and abilities to raise the funds necessary to build the Cedar Canyon Nature Park, to build our wildlife rescue center, uh, to build the visitor center, Natural History Museum, to build the uh, fl eagle flight cages, and to build the exhibits where non-releasable wildlife can be on display for the, for the public to see for educational programs. Then I certainly need uh, um, skilled individuals who are uh, 
educators I, to do wildlife programs. I need uh, skilled individuals who are highly qualified in veterinary services. I need uh, builders. I need contractors. I need custodians. I need people who are willing to roll up their sleeves and, and help to run the Cedar Canyon Nature Park, keep the park running and beautiful. I need people with good uh, botany experiences for the native plants. There, I, there's a million things that I need. Uh, and so, you know, I always say, and this is so very true, that everyone um, not, not only has skills that we can use, but everyone knows someone that can help the Cedar Canyon Nature Park. Everybody wants to play with the animals. And I certainly understand that. But these are wild animals. And because we're working with wild animals, uh, there's a two-year training program you have to go through before you can even volunteer. So if you really would like to help us, there's a lot of other avenues that we could really, really use. And in the process, if you're local in the, in the Cedar City, Utah area, and, and would like to eventually be able to work with the animals, I need you to volunteer in other areas to help develop the Cedar Canyon Nature Park and our Wildlife Rescue Center. And the people that help us do that will certainly be uh, first in line to be able to work with the sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife as the, the nature park develops. Visit our website, gowildlife.org. We've got beautiful wildlife t-shirts. Martin is an amazing photographer and has beautiful uh, photographs of all kinds of wildlife, including this eagle. If you would like to make a donation and uh, receive some of his beautiful photography, we also have a wonderful book out called Healer of Angels. Uh, it's stories of Martin growing up in his youth and overcoming a lot of difficulties as a child. The wisdom of his grandparents, it talks about how he got into falconry and his the first bird he ever got. It, all kinds of wonderful stories. It's very inspirational. Uh, it'll have you laughing. Some of them will have you crying, but it's a great read. So any of those things, you're, you're, if you're interested in, it helps us raise money to build a nature park and to take care of our wildlife rescue. Thank you very much. And if anybody would like to make a $25 donation to the Southwest Wildlife Foundation, I will send you a beautiful headshot portrait of this bald eagle.